Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 28th, 2017 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. BGP, the border gateway protocol that organizes routing across different networks on the internet is in the news again and that's usually not a good thing. In this particular case, a netblock that's assigned to Visa, the credit card company, was rerouted to a Russian ISP. Not 100% sure why this happened, could be a mistake, could be an attack, but the sad part part is that it's still possible even with a very visible net block like this to reroute it at will. Now in this case BGP Mon which is a company that is actually part of OpenDNS did catch the event. That's their business. They're monitoring for odd BGP traffic like that and they wrote up a nice blog about what they saw. Now, one thing an attacker could do with a BGP hijacking attack like this is take advantage of a vulnerability in the popular Bitcoin mining gear Antminer. Antminer apparently is responsible for something like 70% of the internet's Bitcoin mining power. Not sure if the number is correct, but it is certainly substantial. The problem with Antminer is that it does check in anywhere between every 1 and 11 minutes with uh, its manufacturer. So if you bought one of these devices and installed it in your network, every five minutes or so it will connect back to the manufacturer and if the manufacturer sends the right signal back and you just fail for this check-in request, then the ant miner will shut down. There appears to be no authentication used for this particular check-in and in addition to checking whether or not it should continue mining Bitcoin, the ant miner will also send its MAC address and IP address, which of course could be used by this company to identify users. You can protect yourself by blocking access uh, to the particular check-in site. If the ant miner can't connect, it will just continue doing its mining uninterrupted. If you remember about a month ago, Google kind of shook the certificate authority industry by announcing that Google Chrome will phase out trust for some of Symantec's certificate authority certificates. Well, it turns out that back then the reason for this was that Symantec did issue some unauthorized certificates, in particular for Google domains. Now, if Google will go through with this, uh, Google Chrome will stop trusting uh, these certificates that Symantec has issued and certificates that Symantec will issue in the future, which of course would be quite disruptive. Symantec now published a blog post with some of the concessions that Symantec is willing to make in order to make peace with Google. First of all, Symantec offered that it will have done a number of audits of its certificate issuing process, which will also include some of the companies that do issue certificates on Symantec's behalf. They also offer to be more transparent and also to issue certificates with shorter validity times down to three months in order to make it easier to effectively revoke certificates. I hope uh, they'll come to a solution that solves uh, this problem. Overall, it would cause quite a bit of user confusion if a lot of certificates that are actually valid would no longer show up as valid in Google Chrome. NoMX is a company that made a name for itself by offering a little $200 appliance that essentially is a mail server that you can run on your home network. The intent here is to have a more secure mail server and have the email stored on your premises instead of having them stored somewhere out in the cloud accessible to whoever has access to these cloud systems. Well, a researcher now took a closer look at 
no MX and their appliance. Turns out that the software is anything but secure. The hardware itself is a standard Raspberry Pi, probably nothing really wrong with it for this particular application. But uh, just for starters, there is an undocumented admin account with fixed password installed on the device. The software is out of date and the web applications do contain the usual flaws like uh, cross-site request forging and cross-site scripting, which of course could be used to hijack this appliance. So overall, far from secure and to add to that, it's actually pretty difficult to run a mail server from a home internet connection. Even if you do have outbound port 25 open, a lot of your email will be rejected because it comes from a dynamic IP address. Well, and that's it for today. And actually, since the last story did cover some web application security flaws, if you want to learn more about cross-site request forging, cross-site scripting and the like, I'll be teaching our Defending Web Applications class a couple times in the next few months, actually next month in San Diego, then in Minneapolis a few months after that. So if you're interested, I'll add a link to the show notes. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.